Hello everyone, I am Sandeep Kaushik from Genesis Mentors Pune and uh, in this video I would be uh, guiding you about uh, the exam called as MHCET. Now when we talk about this MHCET exam, the pattern of this exam, almost all of you would be aware about the pattern, it will consist of uh, 200 questions to be covered in 150 minutes. It means the speed is a very critical part of this exam and when we talk about uh, the distribution of those 200 questions, almost 100 questions will be based on reasoning and those 100 questions also will be further classified into 25 questions of abstract reasoning and 75 questions of uh, logical reasoning. Now today we will be covering a very important component of it which is uh, visual reasoning. Now when we talk about visual reasoning, it is important because this area was not covered in CAT and ZAD. So most of the students are not well prepared about this area. Now when we talk about uh, visual reasoning, uh, the questions would be in the form of certain pictures that would be given to you and you need to, uh, uh, there, there are various types of questions which we will also talk about today. But the uh, elements which are given in the form of pictures would be given to you inside a box and these boxes are called as uh, frames. It means first I will make you aware with the terms and terminologies that are being used so that in subsequent video while solving questions when I would be using that terms, you all would be comfortable with that. So I said the box will be called as a frame and uh, the pictures or the uh, elements, they are called as elements. For example, they, they would be inside the boxes placed. For example, I have taken a frame which consists of nine elements and nine elements have been divided into three rows, three columns. Now there can be multiple rows, there can be multiple columns, there can be only two rows, two columns, it means, but my terminology would be talking about these nine elements, if taking an example of nine elements, this, this element which would be on the left hand side top corner would be called as first row, first column element. So we have classified these three elements as first row, this as second row and this as third row. Same way, these, this is first column, second column and third column. So each and every element has its specific name. For example, if we talk about this uh, sixth element, it would be called as second row and third column. Right. So when, when we are going to cover up the questions, I will uh, be definitely referring this terminology. So uh, uh, always try to remember that the number of row and number of column will be specifying that element. Now when we are talking about the types of questions that would be asked under, the, under this area which is visual reasoning, we can classify it into broadly three types. The first type would be series. Right. Now within the series, the questions can be asking you to find out the next figure of that series. Right. So there can be uh, three or four uh, uh, frames given to you and you need to find out the logic and with that logic you need to find out what in next would be the frame among the five options. Now in MSCT you also need to understand that each question will consist of five options. Right. So your job is going to be slightly more tougher uh, while eliminating the options. Because in uh, CAT, you might have faced uh, four options, right? Here, there are five options. So, within the five, which one will be the next in the uh, series? Or there could be a missing figure. Missing figure not need not necessarily be the last figure, right? So, uh, out of the uh, question figures, which are five question figures or four question figures, he might uh, uh, give you a question mark in the third picture, right? So, he will give you the first, second frame and the fourth frame. And the third frame missing is among any of the five options which is given there. Then wrong figure. It means he can give you a series of uh, five frames and within that frame, only one frame would not follow the series, rest all would be the part of the series. Then coming on to the last type within the series is could be interchanging two figures. So sometimes you would be given questions in which again a series of frames would be given but out of the series of frames there are two frames which are not in their correct position in the series. So the moment you interchange their position, for example it could be the uh, given that second uh, frame is given fourth and fourth frame is given second. So the moment you interchange them you form a logical series. So these are basically series types of questions. Now coming on to the next set of questions would be obviously analogies. Now when we talk about analogies, obviously the, in the question uh, uh, also you would be given two frames and the two frames will be logically connected. Now you need to definitely uh, uh, decode the logic of those two frames given in the question and among the options you need to find out uh, uh, the set of two frames which will follow the same logic. Right. So all of us are comfortable with analogies or the odd man out. Odd man out is again uh, 
certain uh, type of questions in which I need to definitely find out which one would be the odd man uh, uh, in the series. So again, uh, a series of figures would be given. I need to just find out the odd man in the series. Now, these were the types of questions. But how to solve those questions is also very, very critical. So within those questions, I'm talking about uh, pattern of behavior of the elements is going to be very critical while solving the questions. Now, what do I mean by pattern of the behavior of the elements? So within a frame given to us, right in that frame given to us elements from one frame to second frame would definitely uh, uh, be following any of the behavioral pattern so first type of behavioral pattern of the uh, elements could be shifting it means the number of elements would exactly be same in the frames but each and every element would be changing its position from frame, frame 1 to frame 2, from frame 2 to frame 3. So basically elements of the frame changes their position. You need to decode that uh, probably each and every uh, element in the frame moves one place to uh, clockwise or one place to anti-clockwise depends upon what is the logic that is given to us. And we need to decode that logic. With that we need to solve those questions, be that question of series completion, be that of uh, analogies or be that of odd man out. Next uh, behavioral pattern is rotation. Again, a very important uh, uh, type of uh, behavior of the elements. Here, the elements of the frame changes the direction in which uh, it was pointing. So probably, uh, if the first element points uh, uh, north, and then in the second frame, the same element uh, rotates by 45 degrees. So it would definitely be uh, pointing in this direction. Again, rotating then by uh, again 45 or this time rotates by 90 degree. So we need to find out that uh, what is the logic behind the rotation of the elements, be it in clockwise, be it in anti-clockwise, right? Then comes image formation. Again, a very critical type of uh, uh, questions in which uh, there are two basic uh, types of image formation. Either he would be uh, taking the mirror image of the element or he would be taking the water image of the element. Obviously, while talking about the mirror image, uh, uh, left becomes right and right becomes left. right? And while talking about water image, the top becomes bottom and the bottom becomes top. So we need to talk about if you are still confused for mirror image and water image, mirror image is nothing but a reflection of any element or about y axis. So about y axis when you reflect that element, it will form its mirror image. Left will go to right and right will go to left. And whenever we are talking about water image, it is reflection of any element about x axis. So when you reflect any element about x axis, top will become bottom, bottom will become top. Right. So again, a very critical type. Then the fourth type could be change in the number of elements, which is easier to decode. Right. So change in the number of elements. The moment you see that from frame one to frame two to frame three, the density of the number of elements is increasing. It means he is all decreasing. Then he is playing with the change in the number of elements. We need to decode the logic that how the number of elements is changing and consequently solve the question. Then the next type could be substitution of the elements with new element. So it could be possible that all the given frames in a series are consisting of different different elements. So you need to again find out the logic how the elements are being sub old elements are being substituted by new elements. So could be a possibility that uh, one element uh, in the first frame goes off and two new elements in the second frame comes up. Then again two elements goes off, four elements comes up, new elements comes up. So we need to decode the logic in terms of the substitution of uh, the elements with the new elements. I hope everybody understood that what we are talking about now in the subsequent uh, video what we would be doing is that we would be guiding you with the specific type of questions that would be based on each and every type of questions that I discussed today including the behavioral pattern of the elements within those question types. I hope this is uh, a fundamental video which will help you out to uh, introduce you to the topic visual reasoning. Thank you very much for watching. Keep on watching the next videos uh, for uh, the next updates.